the first reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of individuals, in the life of ministries, in the life of organizations is pride. Up front, let's get that out of the way. Pride. Pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Behind everything that was once glorious and is no longer glorious, pride had a role to play. The Bible says, pride goeth before destruction. You know what it means? That means anytime you see pride dancing around your corridor, it came with escorts. Destruction and a fall is part of it. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 18, 12. The first reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of people is pride. It says, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. You see how they work? Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. One more time. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble. What is pride? The unashamedness to acknowledge God as the basis for where you are. The unashamedness or the, uh, what they call it now, is it unashamedness? The refusal, let me use that expression. The refusal to acknowledge God that you step in God's way and you want to be at the center of everything to receive the credit for where you are as though you were not helped by God, as though you were not helped by men. The refusal to acknowledge God as the reason, the basis, the principal factor for whatever result you have is called pride. And my goodness, our world today is plagued with men and women who are already disasters going to happen in ministry, in business, in politics. Hallelujah. The number one factor that sustains the ability to cut short a man's impact, to cut short a man's greatness. Please pay attention. No matter who you are, if you decide to embrace a life of pride, there is no longevity to your impact. You see, let me tell you this. Before a man falls, he always looks like he cannot fall till he falls. Did you hear what I said? Before a man falls, when you see the kind of assumed stability, you would doubt and say it's impossible. There is nobody who cannot go down. Pride. James chapter 4 from verse 6 to 8. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Koinonia, let's say this together. One to go. God resisted the proud. One more time. I have taught you here that the anointing was supposed to fight anything that is against the will of God. The anointing does not fight what is the will of God. So if God is the one resisting you, there is no amount of impartation that will give you victory. The power of God fights unclean spirits. The power of God fights situations that are inconsistent with the will of God. But if God is now the one fighting you by himself, then you are in trouble. And the Bible says there is such a condition where God can fight a man. Who wins when God fights you? The Bible says, but he giveth grace, not to the Christian, to the humble. So if the Christian is the proud, he will still become a victim of God's wrath, God's power, pride. Hallelujah. I learned this lesson in life. And let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, it's easier to talk about pride when you don't have anything. It's easier to talk about pride when you are poor, when nobody knows you, when you don't have any anointing, you don't have any influence. In the presence of greatness, you will know how difficult it is to be 
and to remain humble. Did you hear what I said? In the presence of greatness, there are people who have not done anything passing comments on people and saying this one is proud. You don't have anything that should compel pride. That's why. In the presence of pride, you will know why, ne I mean the presence of greatness. Do you know why Nebuchadnezzar built a 90 feet statue? You think he started like that? He started as an ordinary man, but my goodness, the level of results that he had, there is something called the pride of life. I have taught you that the pride of life is the, the self-exaltation that comes on account of obvious results. If you don't have results, you are just proud. Are we together? Which translates to foolishness because there is nothing to be proud about. But there are times where you have results, say results, and your results are loud, your results are clear. At such points, it becomes justifiable to be proud. After all, I have anointing. You can see it. After all, I have favor. You can see it. After all, I have influence. You can see it. After all, you have become Beulah and Hephzibah. You can see it. It is at this state. Listen, when Satan wants to stop you, he starts to stop you at the beginning of your journey. If he fails to stop you at the beginning of the journey, he will rest for a while. You will think you, are, you have defeated him, but he's waiting for you at the corridors of greatness. Because something happens to men the moment they become great. Let me repeat myself again, my dear people. Something happens to men. Every man upon the face of the earth, in the presence of greatness, the temptation of pride will always test you. Are we learning? Pride. Pride has destroyed preachers. Pride has destroyed businessmen. Pride has destroyed captains of industry. Pride has destroyed people in the academia. There are people who made a, a boast of several things. They are still begging till today. Pride. You get to a point where you become clear. The devil tells you, without you, this company cannot run. Without you, this ministry will not run. Do you know you are the single reason why this family is working? The moment the devil starts making you look like everything fails without you, you already know you are in trouble. And it may be true. Every house is built by some man, but the truth is that God is the builder of all. How do you know that you are suffering from pride when people no longer matter to you? You believe that everybody must bow before you and acknowledge you because of what you are doing, number one. And you believe that everybody is of less importance except you. You are the principal defining factor in that equation of success. Beware. Pride has already got into the corridor. And sometimes pride can come as a sincere communication of acknowledging your value, celebrating your value, Joshua Selman, you are doing so much traveling around the world. Usually you will start by saying, thank you of God. Very soon you will feel too big to bow. And you say, but, but come to think of it. Oh, this thing, they are not lying. Uh-huh. Are we together? And you know, most times, there are many people who, they don't do the boasting themselves, but they have arranged a system that does the boasting for them. You are still proud. Are we together? <laughs> ah, may God deliver us from pride, oh. Shout amen, oh. Shout amen. amen. This, night, this night is the night to say amen when you are supposed to say amen because this thing has destroyed people. Listen, I hope you know that that's what brought Lucifer down. I will be like the most high. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. If there is anything for you to fight as a survival strategy, ladies and gentlemen, as you rise, as God lifts you, the first thing to check in your life if you want to last is pride. Pride. You can be simple and yet proud, I hope you know. There is a difference between simplicity. There are people who are generally not simple. They are very lavish about life, but in truth, they are humble. 
It's just their disposition. There are others who are very simple and very proud. Then there are those who are still loud and proud altogether. Listen, you have really gotten victory if you have victory over the pride of life. There are a few things that when you really conquer, you deserve to give yourself a pat at the back. One of it, oh, is not having money in your account. Believe me, if you are able to successfully resist the spirit of pride, you have signed in for longevity of impact. With all due respect, many years ago, as many of you may have experienced, I remember... When God started out with us, my goodness, it was at a time where there were many preachers. There were many people. And those days, you would see people that you would never believe. You would think at the end of one week, even the White House would call them and say, what kind of anointing do you have? I tell you sincerely, some of those people with all due respect today, they are, not, they are nowhere to be found because of pride. Hallelujah. There are preachers with all kinds of pride. With all due respect and not to insult, but just starting out in ministry. But my goodness, when you hear people talk sometimes, you have to hold yourself and say, my God, what kind of orientation is this? I, me, myself. And then you know sometimes as preachers, and then of course as great people generally, we have diplomatic ways of surrounding people who their assignment is to just sing our praises. And then we use this false sense of praise. Well, glory be to God. But the truth is there's no glory going to God anywhere. Humility is discernible. Humility is feelable. When you stand before a humble person, you will know. You can be confident and yet humble. Do you know why? A humble person is ever conscious of projecting Jesus, not self. You know that you are walking in humility because the desire to stand in God's way is not even there at all. I've told the Lord, whatever he will give me that will stop men from seeing him, may it never come into my life. That, that is a useless gift. It's a gift that will end up being a burden to you, the carrier, an extra luggage that is not necessary for your destiny. And I'm saying this because while greatness inspires, sometimes let's be careful what we copy from great people. You must sustain the wisdom to edit in love. Oh, God has made Joshua Selman great. Be careful the things you copy. Don't swallow everything hook, line, and, and uh, what they call the other thing. Are we together now? Do you know... There are people, this pride you see sometimes is as a result of a background of failure, especially for Africa. There are many people who missed greatness in their childhood. Are we learning? There are people who missed an opportunity to be great. Either they were insulted by parents or they were insulted by in maybe school institutions. So naturally, the moment you make it, that desire to shout it and slap it at the face of everybody. Unlike your believing or your disbelieving me, I have arrived. And in case you do not know, I have an assignment to make sure I slap it on your face that I'm no longer the version you used to know. I'm now the rich version of me, the anointed version of me. I'm now the CEO version of me. And sometimes when you live long and access wisdom, you will find out that it's totally unnecessary. The pressure to prove a point and the pressure to let men know you have made it is a sign that you have not really made it. Because can I tell you, success is loud, it is visible, it is clear. When you have made it, it becomes clear. Even a blind man knows that you have made it. Don't play with me. Oh, do you know how rich I am? Does wealth hide? Where do you hide it? Does wisdom hide? Does genuine power hide? Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. If God has made you, he has made you. It's as simple as that. One of the ways to encourage people and to inspire them is to combine humility with your result. It's a beautiful sight to behold that you watch people who are gifted, who are skilled, who are great, but then their lives become so inspiring because they wrap that excellence with humility. 
This is a prayer that I keep praying for myself even to till today. There are some prayers you never graduate from praying. One of it is keep me humble, oh God. Keep me humble. Keep me humble. As men sing your praise, keep me humble. It's the same people who say shame on him. He has fallen. So when people are clapping for you, during your triumphant entry, I have taught you, beware. Most people are only clapping for themselves through you. Are we together? You want to last? You want to know why great men go down? I tell you the number one reason is pride. 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 That when you submit yourself to prayer and say, Lord, every time when men look at me, may they see you. Yes, they will acknowledge your hand upon my life. But beyond me, may they see you, may they see your power, and may they see your glory, may they see your wisdom. Let it not be all about Joshua Selman. Let it not be all about Koinonia. And you see, let me tell you, the world that we live, we live in now makes you look like a fool. The moment you project Jesus beyond self, they tell you you are a fool. The way you gain influence is to shout it. Once people know, and it's true in our world from a secular standpoint, when you shout it, whether it's true or not, there is an attitude you give results that you seem to command respect. There are people who are not 10 years old in their impact, five years old in their impact. You celebrate them, you dance around their crowns, and in one year, two years, 10 years perhaps, they've gone. And they're still alive. It is not a good thing. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be I'm never tired of sharing with you my experience and the Lord told me very clearly son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you this is a condition can I tell you seated here looking at me as sincere people who want to make it for some seated looking at me now as sincere people who have made it to a level and I understand the pressure of wanting, you don't want people to downplay what you stand for. Because we live in a world where there are people who will see the results on your life and still downplay it. And I know sometimes it can be ego stinging. So the pressure to have to prove a point and slap it on people's face that, listen, don't look down on me. I am a millionaire. I am a billionaire. I'm an anointed person. I'm the CEO. But I'm telling you from the lens of wisdom, it is unnecessary. Your passion to remain must exceed your passion to be known. Your passion to remain, to last, must exceed your passion to be known. Write it down, please. Your passion to remain must exceed by far your passion to be known. If your passion to be known becomes greater than your passion to last, you will be known, but you will not last. Please, someone write this both in your heart and then on whatever writing material you're using. Your passion to last, your passion to remain, must by it must exceed by far your passion to be known. A man can be known and yet not last, but it is difficult to be long within a system and yet not known. Is someone learning? Why greatness is short-lived? Why glory suddenly turns to shame? Why longevity does not happen for many people? Reason number one, pride. What is the solution? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, in all your results, acknowledge him. When self wants to use your results to promote, to shout it, remember that I am here because of him. The nations can think what they want to think. They can say what they want to say. 
but my knees will never be tired of going on the ground to say thank you. No matter how high you rise. Hallelujah. Every time I thank God for this ministry, I thank God for my life, I say it again and again. Lord, may I never become an idol to a generation such that they forget you to remember me. No. It's a bad bargain. Remember our discussion, previous discussions? i rather be forgotten, but if I can make Jesus known, honored, worshipped, respected, at the expense of my being known, it was a good bargain. And don't think I'm just talking because I'm here on stage preaching. No. Pride. Run away from pride. Run away from pride. If it is at work in your life right now, bind it. Cast it. Get it out of your destiny. And say in the name of Jesus, I desire to last. Make up your mind that I will not be the kind of person whose story will be used tomorrow to encourage someone to say, don't be like this person. Do you know it is better to never rise than to get to a point where your name is written as a memorial, a lesson to encourage people anytime they want to use somebody. Today, every time we talk about in the Bible, we want to warn young men to last. The individual we use is Samson. Do you know the many great things that Samson did? But simply because of the end of his life, Everybody forgets that he tore a lion, that he did all of these things. Can I tell you, when you go down, you will be surprised how people will forget all that you did when you were up. Hear yeah, what I'm telling you? When you go down, it doesn't matter what you were doing while you were up. It will take the mercy of God for men to remember your exploits when you are down. Ichabod. We're obtaining grace to last. Obtaining grace to remain. Number one, pride. 